So what's going on guys, Kade is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best Lost Arcs PvE and PvP tier list in 2022. So Lost Ark was just released to EU and NA and right now we have 15 different and unique classes to choose from. So you may be wondering which is the best class for PvE and PvP. And by PvE I mean all the content like raids, leveling, cube and chaos dungeons. And by PvP I mean 1v1 and 3v3 arenas and much more. So I have done bunch of testing for both of these categories and here is the best overall tier list that you've been waiting for. So if all this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first class which I will put in the S tier and it is the Dead Blade. So in PvE this class has big AUV skills with high damage to kill big mob groups very quickly. She also has good mobility to make the leveling process very easy and enjoyable. Her skills suffer from relatively long cooldowns so make sure you group up your enemies to kill them very efficiently. Then in PvP the Dead Blade revolves around quick catches with her dashes and crowd control. She is a hit and run specialist that goes in when the time is right and deals massive amounts of damage. This class quickness and high protected skills allow her to climb high in this tier list making her an excellent choice for new or veteran players to get into. So then in my summary, this class is high mobility, he can do very high damage and you have a very good crowd control which applies for PvP and PvE. And then lastly we as well have a very high push immunity which means that most of your skills can't get interrupted. And then for the negatives, this class is quite squishy which means that you can't handle too much damage. Then as well your DPS skills have high cooldowns and you have to be careful about when you want to use them. Them. And lastly, almost all of your skills are close range, and that's about it. So then moving over to the second class which I will put at the S tier and it is the Paladin. So the Paladin mainly serves as a support class in groups and is highly requested role for endgame content. However, this does not mean that he is incapable of playing solo, because he has decent amount of AOV damage skills available from the start to accelerate the leveling and dungeon farming process. And of course remember to group up your enemies before using AOV skills for the best efficiency possible. Where the other support class prevents damage by focusing on high shield uptime, the paladin tries to prevent damage by using damage reduction skills on allies and much more. So then for PvP, this is a tanky support class. He plays very well with offensive classes because of his holy protection and heavenly blessing skills. This class as well gives his team more control over the battlefield. But make no mistake, the paladin is also capable of dealing damage the same as in PvE. And lastly you can choose to amplify your own damage or instead support your team with more defenses. The biggest drawback for this class in PvP is the lack of push immunity. So this means that if you don't want to get your skills interrupted, you have to avoid the damage and you should not use all of your abilities all at once. So then in my quick summary, this paladin class has high survivability and even while being a full support he can still do decent amount of damage. And then most importantly this class can provide offensive or defensive buffs depending on his team. And then moving over to the negatives and this class has huge lack of push immunity for PvP. Then for PvE the paladin has lower heal and mana regeneration efficiency. And then lastly as you are playing a support role you will be always relying on your teammates and that's about it. So then moving over to the third class which is the Gunlancer and we want to put him right in the A tier. So in PvE this class has great monster clearing speed because of his strong AV abilities like the sharp Gunlance and the Guardian's Thunderbolt. This makes his leveling process easy and enjoyable even despite his low movement speed. Besides damage the Gunlancer can also support his team with shields, damage reduction buffs and target armor debuffs. In endgame he can also interrupt many dangerous boss skills with his taunt skill. Then as well be aware that the Gunlancer is the only class whose spacebar moves them backwards. This can be a turn off for some players but after a few days of gameplay you will get used to it. So then in PvP the Gunlancer's greatest strength lies in his supportive capabilities as he is the best tank in Lost Ark. But don't let his looks fool you because he can deal respectable amounts of damage as well. Not only he can protect himself but as well he can provide a bunch of support to his teammates. So then in my summary, this class is very high survivability, 
and he is the tankiest class in the game. And this means that in PvP and PvE, you will be very hard to kill. But then for the negatives, sometimes your damage can be low. If you're doing end game content, you can run into mana issues. Then as well, all of your skills are very close range. And then lastly, you will have to get used to the backwards dodge. And that's about it. So then moving over to the next class which is the Sorceress and we want to put her right next to the Gunlancer. So Sorceress is one of the two starting mage classes available in Lost Ark. She specializes in dealing ranged magic damage with elements of fire, lightning and ice. This is a very good class for new players as she deals high damage at all stages of progression and she can even easily complete solo or group content. Then in PvP this class has many flexible combo options and can potentially take over a battlefield with her mobility and low cooldowns. Even though her damage is very high, most of it depends on if you can land your skill shots. And sometimes if you don't have a dodge available, then you will be deleted in just few seconds. So then in my summary, the sorceress is a high mobility class, as you get one teleport and one normal dodge. Then as well she is very high damage and has low cooldowns, but then on the other hand, she is very squishy. Most of her damage depends on landing your skill shots, and she has low push immunity in PvP, which means that she can get stunned quite easily. And that's about it. So then going over to the next one which is our next A tier class and it is the Gunslinger. So this class can swap to 3 different weapons in order to match any fight which makes him a very balanced class during the leveling and dungeon farming phase. She has everything in her kit including mobility, single target and AOV damage. And as you have 3 different weapons with multiple abilities, in each one you can never run out of skills to use. So then in PvP, the Gunslinger revolves around quick catches with her sniper and pistol combo. The ability to dance around the arena with lethal skills gives her a very good ranking on the tier list. If you play it well, this class is a strong carry that is hard to stop. So then the pistol skills are used for mobility and engagement, then the shotgun is used for damage and lastly his sniper is mainly used for long range one shot kills. So then in my summary, the gunslinger has high mobility with high damage and he has a very good push immunity as well. And then for the negatives, this class doesn't have that many defenses. Then as well your main pistol skills are close range, so it will require for you to constantly be close to the enemy. And then lastly for the newer players, it might be overwhelming when you need to swap between 3 different weapons. And that's about it. So then going over to the next class which is the Bard and we want to include him right into the A tier. So this is a support class that with her music provides a wide variety of supportive skills. She levels and farms dungeons by herself a lot slower than the pure damage classes. While her huge AV clearing skills are up to part with other classes, she lacks any decent single target damage. If you want to play a support class, you need to understand the abilities of your teammates and communicate with them to bring out their best damage. It is easy to play a bard at a basic level, but the difference between a highly skilled bard and a beginner is huge. So then in PvP, the bard plays like your traditional support class. Even though you will do low damage, she makes up for it with her great defensive skills and buffs. She ranks pretty high on this tier list with only the paladin class challenging her supportive position. Just having a support on your team alone gives you an innate advantage before the battle even starts. But don't forget that a well played bard can be a difference between winning and losing a match. So then in my summary, the positives are that the most of the bard builds in PvE are very cheap to get. Then as well, this class is pretty beginner friendly. And she has a lot of defensive skills. And then for the negatives, as you are a support, you're very team reliant. Then as well, this class has no mobility whatsoever. And lastly, if you are purely looking for the best support class, then the Paladin is a bit stronger. And that's about it. So then going over to the next one, which is our last A tier class, and it is the Shadow Hunter. So this class has small AV skills, but she compensates for that with low cooldowns and high mobility. She is one of the few transformation classes in Lost Ark, with her demonized identity. That means that when this bar is at full, you can activate the demonized mode and become a different creature with different abilities. This adds more mobility and overall damage. Then in PvP, the Shadow Hunter relies on quick catches with her dashes and long range engagements. 
She is a hit and run specialist that goes in when the time is right and escapes with ease. Finding the right timing of engagement is very crucial to succeeding on this class. She ranks high in this tier list because of her ability to be extremely mobile ranged class that doesn't sacrifice damage because of her demonic form. So then in my summary, the Shadow Hunter has strong stagger, he has low cooldowns on the demonized skills, then as well you get a small healing when transformation starts, and then lastly you can use this class as a melee or medium range. And then for the negatives, a lot of times you perform inconsistent stagger, then at lower levels you will get very quick demon form, and lastly you are very reliant on your skill shots, and that's about it. Okay, so now we are finally done with the A tier, and our next class is the Artillerist, and he gets to be placed in the B tier. So, the Artillerist is a slow but deadly damage focused class. Most of his skills deal decent damage in huge AUV, which helps to clear big monster group waves in just few seconds. This is a easy to learn but difficult to master class. His main damage skills like the Air Raid and the Homing Barrage have a delay between hit and the cast time, so you are required a lot more knowledge of boss attack patterns and mechanics, so you would be able to play the Artillerist to its maximum potential. So then in PvP, the Artillerist is a combo reliant class that relies on his stuns to deal big damage. The combos can deal more than half an opponent's HP or even more if it lands correctly. But sadly, these skills can be dodged quite easily, so positioning and landing the stun is very important. This class is easy to get into and you can even abuse newer players if they get caught in front of your traps. So then in my summary, this class is high damage, easy to pick up and learn, and he has good stunning skills. And then for the negatives, this class is predictable. He has low mobility and almost non-existing push immunity, which means that you can get easily interrupted, and that's about it. So then for our 9th class we have the Void Dancer, and he is one of the last B tier classes. So the Void Dancer is one of the highest mobility classes in Lost Ark, with skills like the Lightning Kick. The skill has low cooldowns and increases the overall traveling speed during the leveling and dungeon farming phase. She lacks AV skills but makes up for it with high single target damage abilities, like the Moon Flash Kick and the Sweeping Kick. So then in PvP, the Void Dancer revolves around pressuring the opposition's backline with her hit and run playstyle. There are a lot of ways this class can engage, picking the right engagement and target will allow you to shine on this class. She is a good class in 3v3 and 1v1s when played right. So then in my final summary, this class has high mobility and has high defense, then as well you get to have really good single target damage, and then lastly you can even perform very fast counter attacks, but then on the other hand you will sometimes have mana issues. This class has no push immunity, and the Void Dancer requires basic attacks, and his cooldowns are pretty long, and that's about it. So then moving over to the next class which is the Berserker, and we want to put him in the B tier. So the Berserker is a class with high burst damage and large AV skills. The damage compensates more than enough for the long cooldowns and low mobility of this class during the leveling and dungeon farming phase. He can obliterate massive amounts of groups in just few seconds. So then in PvP, the Berserker is Lost Ark's traditional warrior class with a slight twist. He is a fast beefy and can dish out serious damage when given the opportunity. The Berserker plays more like a hit and run assassin than rather a full melee class. That's mainly because his skills in PvP have high cooldowns and he can be limited by mana issues as well. But do not worry because his skills have a devastating impact in battle if used properly. So then in my quick summary, this class has high damage, he has good mobility and lastly the Berserker has good push immunity which means that he can't easily get interrupted. But then for the downsides, this class has long cooldowns, he can sometimes get into mana issues, and the Berserker playstyle can be somewhat predictable. And lastly, he is not immune to hard crowd control skills, and that's about it. So then going over to the next one, which is our last B tier class, and it is the Solfest. 
so the Soulfist is a well-rounded class with good mobility, single target and AOV damage. This combination makes the leveling and PvE experience pretty smooth but neither too slow or too fast. This class has World Decimation ability available to them, which is the highest single target damage skill in the game. So then in PvP, she has an energy system called Hype. So imagine mana getting replaced with the Hype. And once your energy is depleted, you cannot perform any additional skills until it's recharged. So the way you fill your Hype bar is by hitting mobs or players. Then in a 3v3 and a 1v1, the Soulfist relies on mid-range skill shots and their hype windows that gives you increasing stats and energy restoration. Knowing when to abuse this hype energy will allow you to get very good combos on the enemy players. So then in my summary, this class is very good mobility, he can give his team more synergy buffs and lastly he has good crowd control. But then on the other hand, this class is very skill shot reliant, then as well you have to be very careful about your hype management. And then lastly, your most powerful awakening skill can easily miss the target and that's about it. So then moving over to the next class, which is the Scrapper, and we want to put him right into the C tier. So the Scrapper is an agile fighter class that focuses purely on melee kicks and punches. Her identity lets her use skills by alternating between both of her energy types called Stamina and Shock. While lacking in AOV skills during the early levels, she picks up the pace by gaining insane damage skills. Despite so many positives, there's also negatives, one being the lack of ranged abilities, and lastly most of your attacks are extremely close range. They have very narrow hitboxes and small AOEs. But still, these skills feel very impactful to use and once mastered, don't hold you back. So then in PvP, the Scrapper's unique identity offers her great versatility. Managing shock and stamina energy properly, coupled with low cooldowns, allows her to keep up consistent pressure on the backline enemies. Few dashes for her spacebar leaves plenty of room for massive outplay potential. While mostly focused on a hit and run playstyle, she is able to stick to the target if necessary. She can even do a bunch of great damage when given the opportunity. So then in my quick summary, this class is high mobility and high disruption. And then lastly you have good crowd control. And then for the negatives, most of your skills have a small hitbox. She has no self protection and she has short range attacks. And lastly, you will struggle while fighting against range classes, and that's about it. So then for one of the last classes in Lost Ark, we have the Striker. And we want to include him right next to the Scrapper. So the Striker is a high mobility class with small AOV skills. At lower levels, this class is slower at clearing bigger mob groups compared to the other classes until you unlock and invest in your bigger AOV skills. Nevertheless, stronger elite and boss monsters are easy target for the Striker's single target focus skills. The Striker is a burst energy class because of the attack speed buff and the crit chance debuff he gets from his skills. So then in PvP, the Striker revolves around around pressuring the opposition's backline with his hit and run playstyle. There are a lot of ways this class can engage, picking the right engagement and target will allow you to shine on this class. So then in my quick summary, the striker is a high mobility and high disruption class. And then for the negatives, he has low defenses, he's very back attack dependent for PvE, then as well he takes a bunch of animation time to perform his more powerful skills. And lastly, this class has low push immunity and that's about it. So then moving over to the next class, which we will use to close this C tier, and it is the Dadai. So this class can swap to three different weapons in order to match any fight, making him a very well balanced class during the leveling and dungeon farming pace. He has everything in his kit, including mobility, single target and AV damage. With 16 skills that you can put into your skill bar, the Dadai can rotate to the pistol and rifle stance after he has used all of his shotgun skills. So then for PvP, the Deadeye can revolve around quick catches with his sniper and pistol combo. The ability to dance around the arena with lethal skills give him a decent ranking on this tier list. Enforce, Execution and Aim Shot skills are his signature moves. If you play it well, this class is a strong carry that is hard to stop. So then in a quick summary, this class is high mobility and high damage, and lastly you get a push immunity as well. But then for the negatives, this class is pretty squishy, to get the maximum damage it will require decent skill ceiling, and lastly you will need to swap between 3 different weapons, which at some times might seem overwhelming and that's about it. 
So then for the last and final class we have the sharpshooter and we want to put him in the last D tier category. So this class has skills with low cooldowns and quick animations. Clearing speed might be slightly slower compared to other classes, but his high mobility helps in avoiding hits and dealing consistent damage to the enemies. This class suffers from low stagger and part break, so you can't contribute too much to the party besides damage at the end game raids. So then in PvP, the sharpshooter plays like a normal hit and run assassin. With his stealth skill he can serve as a ranged initiator and a huge damage dealer to the enemy backline. His damage is quite high and he's an excellent choice for someone looking to play as a ranged bow player. With proper positioning and good aim, this class can be devastating in battle but it's not that easy to learn. So then in my summary, this class has good stealth, good peels, very good mobility and he has good push immunity as well. And then for the negatives, the sharpshooter is quite squishy, a lot of his damage in PvE and PvP depends on RNG. His DPS skills have long cooldowns and lastly, to play the skill, it will require for you to have really good positioning and that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or maybe you have a different idea about a class on this Lost Ark tier list, then you are feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I'll catch you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace. I